Luke will be playing a little bit of defense as long as he doesn't have to move. So notice how he's guarding Eric Gordon. Top guarding him in case a down screen came about, but he's alone on this side, so there's no screen that's going to occur. So he's constantly turning his head, understanding what's going on, where players are going, and putting himself in position to take away those options. So now he's able to make a play on that, get a deflection, leave him with nine seconds on the shot clock, and he really stood in the same spot the whole time, right? He's going to play defense smart, but if it involves movement, that's where it gets difficult. That's where it gets rough. As Luka's going into these pick and rolls, he's always looking over the shoulder. Grayson Allen, doesn't matter, right? And so when he gets off this screen, he's just reading this weak side, right? And he's aware of his role at the same time. So notice the movement of De Devin Booker, right? You saw this exchange right here with Derrick Jones and Tim Hardaway. Boom, D. Book steps in the paint, thinks this is a tag. Now he's hopping out the paint, and now Luka's throwing this pass. And now you've seen Lively just literally stop underneath the rim and then catch the ball and then turn. Why didn't he catch it in stride? Understand this. Lucas sees Lively. Lively turns his head away. He can't throw it now, even though D-Book is stepping out. He has to wait until Lively can actually see the ball, right? Aware of the fact of that, right? So boom, Lively gets there, is able to see the ball, throws the pass while D-Book is still out of position, hits him right there. And that's one thing that Phoenix literally just got torched on, that weak side. Notice how we making these reads, man. Now, this is what Phoenix was fucked up on, this side over here. They're late every single time. And so what did Luka Doncic do? Do the same read, same look every single time. Drag screen occurs. All right, I know they're going to blitz this, right? So what am I going to do when I get off the screen? I'm going to stay in the space that I have. I'm not going to close up the gap between the person that's coming over to double me, right? I'm not going to close up that space because when I have less space, that's when players begin to panic, right? So I'm going to make sure I got my space. So not only do I not panic, but I have time to read and have angles to pass because with space, I have more angles to put the ball, protect the ball and make my passes. Now I'm just reading this weak side. Are they stepping over, right? Boom, Katie's late, stepping over. Now Lively is able to turn, get right to his right hand, boom, shot. The key to defense will immediately make you a better defender. Just have active hands. Watch Luca, right? We know Luca's slow as shit, laterally, linearly, any plane of movement, Luca's slow right but on this play he's only saved because he's out here just putting his hands into lanes hoping that he can get a hand on the ball and he does end up getting that and now boom peep this right here too though play not done asking for the ball he's like bro i just got a goddamn steal i play some defense for once give me the rock but he low-key helped him out by not throwing the ball so early because now by catching the ball here he just steps directly into the shot and the focus of the defense is not on luca the entire time dribbling the ball up and so now he has a walk in three because he doesn't have to dribble and take the ball off the floor if he already had the ball in his hand person would have probably stepped up and guarded he wouldn't have had that three that's such a clean look right here right so he really did him did him a, a service right by throwing that ball a little late anytime you see a double team the key to defeating that double team is leveraging how long the ball is in your hand right look at look at luca with these dribbles hang dribble hang dribble dribble hang again dribble hang again and now he's able to make the read that entire time keeping the dribble alive and hanging those dribbles allowed him to have more time to be able to make passes and make quicker passes look as he's getting right look at d book look at grayson allen cut cut occurs a roll occurs d book steps over all the way midline grayson allen all the way midline hang dribbles there as soon as i want to make the pass i just bring it up from hand boom fire it off right and now gets to gets to Dante Exum along that baseline, dunk. Screen occurs right here. Okogi, switch, boom, Metu right there. But Luca also understands the double is gonna come, right? The double is coming. So what does he do? He goes right away from the double team. And notice most importantly, what's going on, on this weak side, right? After he's made that decision, he's not even looking at this no more. He just needed to buy himself more time to read this weak side where there's a disadvantage because there's two at the top trying to guard him. So at this point, Grant Williams gets into the paint. Eric Gordon has to step up. And now what should happen is that, boom, Little drops down. But now you got, uh, what's his name, Jaden? Now shaking up to the wing, right? And now Lively is sitting right here along this baseline wide open, right? Pass, misses it, but gets it right back. Dunks that literally on the second catch. Tough as shit. Remember what I said last time? The double team is going to end up coming from his left side. So if he decides to go back left, the double team is going to be right there. He's going straight into the double team. But now, with so much space, with three players flat along this baseline, 
he has space on his wing to try and turn this corner. And by turning this corner, this gives him more time to be able to make reads and read the floor. So at this point, right, let me slow this down so y'all can really understand this. As Luka gets here and gets up into the air, he's looking at this wing. And so with Eric Gordon being so far from this wing, he's gonna anticipate this pass going to the wing because that's where he's looking at and how he's loading up a pass. But you can't tell where the ball is gonna go until it leaves. Right, his eyes may show one thing, but until the ball gets out of his hands, that's not until when you know where it's actually gonna go. And so at this point in time, Eric Gordon's gonna overreact because there's so much distance to cover to this wing. And so, boom, ball gets thrown, Eric Gordon's already leaving to the wing, but it's going to the corner. So now he's taking a step up to that elbow, and now he's going to that corner, leaving Jaden, boom, open right there from that corner. Knockdown. Understand physics and anatomy right here, right? You see Luca, wide base, wide frame, ball over his head, right? You see how wide he is, how much room he's taking up, right? But as soon as he enters his drive, he goes from being bilateral to now being unilateral by getting into that lunge, you get into that sprint. And that's gonna set him up perfectly. And notice the one more detail he's gonna take to get through this gap. Bringing the ball with his unilateral frame to now make himself even thinner to get through this gap and now get to the rim, right? So understand, like in basketball, it's about your ability to manipulate your body to get yourself through certain gaps. Look, understand the chain reaction of defense responsibility, right? Look, boom, screen occurs. Luka gets doubled. At this point in time, Devin Booker has to worry about Powell and Tim Hardaway Jr. Now Metu also has to worry about Tim Hardaway Jr. and Derrick Jones Jr., right? So now they have to worry about multiple players at the same time. And so their focus is split on those two players off the ball and the ball, right? And so at this point in time, Derrick Jones Jr., slipper ass motherfucker, hide the he's slipper as hell, right? Look, as Metu was worried about this screen, this double, and Tim Hardaway Jr. on this pop, and De Devin Booker taking away this plug on the roll, Derrick Jones Jr. literally continues to move out of Metu's sight. I'm sorry, I got to go back once again so you can see this, right? Right here, he's in sight, but he's continuously moving just a little bit, shuffling, and from Luca's perspective, he sees this behind Metu, and he's already loading up this pass because he already knows he's cooked, he's beat, he's done, right? So he's throwing the pass from 40 feet away, on target, on time, off that little ass read, just because he's seeing it behind his back. Because he understands that Metu simply cannot be able to backpedal and beat him to the ball. He's going to have to foul him, or Derrick Jones Jr. is going to score. Or he's just going to miss on his own. But Derrick Jones Jr. getting up that high, nope. He ain't missing that. Look, hey, part two to that same play. Look, boom, they score, get a dunk right back on the other side. Look at Luca, right? Gets his catch. Notice the hand movement. Run that shit back. Run that shit back now, right? Let's run this shit back, right? Same action occurs once again, right? Derrick Jones Jr. circles up. Um, that actually might be the play call. I don't know. But boom, now Tim Hardaway Jr. is here. And Metu, instead of playing up so high and worrying about the, the pop that's going to happen, the slip out by Tim Hardaway Jr., he's dropped back right here to where Tim Derrick Jones Jr. can't come cut behind his back, right? And so now, what is this, what's this? going to happen here? Double occurs. Grayson Allen has to guard these two. And when Metu now has to pick up and recover for one, he's now picking up in a spot where Dwight Powell has room to be able to take a dribble and get into his body. Boom, bump, score, right? <laughs> Layers to a play. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This might be one of the most immaculate changes of pace I've never seen, right? Notice Luca, right? Taking his strides, picks it up, right, left. Notice Grayson Allen where he's jumping, right? Look at that jump and look at that contest. That is no contest. Grayson Allen was going so fast and recovering that once he began to jump, and since Luca slowed down his steps on that stride, on that on, on the on that one two, he's now in a spot that's so much further back than Grayson Allen. And now he's literally wide open. Who does he see? Nobody. <laughs> nobody, bro. Literally right here. He don't see nobody, right? All because he's literally slowed down those strides going into that, going into this floater. So he took what could have been a contested shot into a literal open shot just by slowing down the strides. This is why Luka's stats really be so inflated. 19 on the shot clock, right? Notice where Luka is. Notice the distance he's going to travel on this possession, right? KD gets left, roll occurs, he goes from this right block to this middle, takes away that. Now cut occurs from Akogi, he's just stepping over to his left because Akogi can't shoot, right? So now, 
boom, he takes those strides. I don't know if that was a travel or not, but Luke is still right here in the same vicinity. Maybe you've traveled about 10 feet this whole time. So now, boom, drive occurs, kicks out to Okogi. Okogi goes and attacks, hits that baseline, might have even stepped out of bounds. Luka still hasn't moved. Touched, boom, met two down here on this baseline just so he doesn't get a three second. Now he boxes out, right? Even though they hit the shot, Luka is spending defense just conserving his energy for offense, right? And y'all gonna understand, when once he is able to, say, even guard, actually have to guard somebody who's supposed to be in the game to stop him, it's not gonna work. Even though at this point, there's nine other variables on the floor, Luka only has to read one, right? And the one thing he has to read is not Eubanks on this double. He, they've been doing this all night. He already knows what's going to happen. It's D-Book because he's going to be the person that might have to tag and take away this role. And if he does, boom, he may take that away. Now I have Tim Hardaway Jr. If he doesn't and goes to Hardaway Jr., now I got Lively exactly what he does here. And this person is late rotating over all night. Like I said, now boom, they get that foul. Hey, this is why defense in today's NBA does not matter. This is the person they put in the game to stop Luka. But what is Luka going to do when he guards him, right? Stop him because they really can't shoot a lot of the time. So boom, Luka even gets a block. So what's going to happen on this other side? Luka brings the ball down. And what's this going to end up being? Instead of a two from that other side, right? The defense is not set. Luka's going to go and attack against the person who's supposed to stop him. But they can't stop him, right? The only way to combat that is with more offense. And if teams don't understand that, good luck trying to win games. You got to combat offense with offense and a little bit of defense, not offense and just defense with no offense.